G'day guys, if you're a keen rugby player, you know that being injured is extremely frustrating. It's especially annoying when these injuries, for the most part, are preventable soft tissue and joint niggles that stop you from playing the game on the weekend. G'day guys and girls, my name is Alex, I'm an Australian pro rugby physio, and today I'm going to be sharing with you my rugby prehab program. I've used this program to help prevent injuries with pro rugby union and rugby league players, and I think it's going to help you. This prehab program is one that is done three to four times a week by pro players. Uh, it's an activation and mobility session to get them ready for the day. And it doesn't take too long to complete and it shouldn't feel like a workout. Now, I know you don't have that much time and so this program can be done by amateur players throughout the season to help prevent injuries and just doing it twice a week will definitely have some benefit. As always, my videos are timestamped so you can find any specific exercises that you're after. And without any more mucking around guys, let's dive into exercise one. Our first exercise is going to be banded mobility. Simply grab yourself a power band, attach it to a movable object, and then place it around the ankle. This should be around about where your tongue of your shoe is. Move forward into this lunge position and then move forward over your toes. Keep your heel as flat to the ground as possible. Try not to let it come up. As soon as your heel starts to come off the ground, that means you've gone as far as your ankle can, back off and repeat the exercise. Some people may prefer to do it in standing. Same principles apply. Make sure you keep your heel as flat as possible. Two sets of 12 reps for whatever version you choose. There is a kettlebell ankle mobility version. You could use a weight plate, any sort of weight on the top of your thigh. Leaning forward, keep the heel flat, and this is gonna to help to improve your ankle dorsiflexion range of motion. You don't have to do both. This is just an option if you don't have a power band. So once you've done one leg, immediately swap over and do the other leg. It should take you no longer than 20 to 25 seconds to do each leg at a time. And because we're going through this twice, it should only take up to two minutes max to finish this exercise. Ankle sprains are really common in rugby league and rugby union, making sure that we've got adequate dorsiflexion range of motion of our ankle, which is that ability for our knees to come over our toes is really important. Stiff ankles can lead to recurrent ankle sprains. They can also lead to different injuries around the foot and ankle and even the knees. As when we go to change direction and sprint, a certain amount of range of motion in the body is required. And if we don't have that range of motion in the ankle, we'll find it in the knee. And that can lead to things like ACL injuries, meniscus injuries, as well as MCL injuries. The next mobility exercise is for anterior hip or front hip tightness. Many rugby players get really tight hip flexors and quads because they're doing lots of tackling. They're always spending time in that flexed position. So opening up those hips, stretching out the quads, stretching out the hip flexors, just the entire front of the body is important. We wanna make sure we uh, posteriorly tilt our pelvis, which is tucking our pelvis underneath ourselves, squeeze our glutes and then lean forward. This will give a nice stretch of our hip flexors. This is important to do just to make sure that we don't get too tight in the front of our hip and lead to things like hip and groin pain. Groin pain is really common for young and older rugby league and rugby union players, especially men, because they get a bit heavier, they get a bit weak around the pelvis, and there's just lots of load in around running and sprinting and changing direction. So working on some flexibility in this area is of a lot of importance for rugby league and union players in the prevention of groin pain. You don't necessarily need the band to do the exercise, but the band does provide a cue to push against, which gets us more often than not in the correct position for the stretch. Make sure to place the hip up in around the groin area and we tuck underneath, push forward and squeeze the glutes. As you'll notice, there's not a lot of arching in my back. It's actually quite flat and this is enough to get a good stretch of the front of the hip. If you're leaning forward and you're arching all the way through your back and you're just not feeling a stretch, you're doing it wrong, scale it back, look at the video, tuck your hips underneath, move forward squeeze the glutes and you should get that stretch at the front of your hip. Now the exercises like this pigeon stretch that I have in the program, if they have an optional next to it, it means they are exactly that. They are optional and they're not in my absolutely recommended exercises, but not everyone is the same. Some people will require different exercises due to a different injury history. A prehab should be based on the sport that you're doing and your previous injury history as well as what was found during your pre-season screening. So although you may not have had an injury in the area, you may be a bit tight or a bit weak. So for someone that gets really tight around the hips, a pigeon stretch is a nice way to work on the back side of our 
hip capsule. So the first stretch that we did is more the front side of a hip capsule. This should be giving us a stretch at the back of our glutes, working on stretching out glutes, working on stretching around that posterior hip capsule. We're not making things looser. We're just trying to explore the available range of motion that you have and making sure that you're maximizing your available range of motion. We're not stretching out the hip capsule or anything like that. We're just maximizing the amount of range of motion that you innately have. Make sure you pop the leg across, you keep your weight in that front leg, and then you can sink back and into that stretch, giving you that stretch at the back of the hip. Other players will suffer from a lot of lower back stiffness and back pain just from the repeated load in the gym and on the playing field. Starting off with some easy lumbar rocks is a nice way to begin and then you can move on to big lumbar rotations. Rotations are a really nice way to get mobility in the lumbar spine that is generally not provocative. It's always a lot nicer to do rotations over extensions and in the morning in a prehab environment where we're just looking to get some mobility and activation, this is a great exercise to do for people people with lumbar stiffness uh, in, in rugby populations. Now we're moving on to more activation exercises and low load strengthening exercises. The 90 degree shoulder rotation is a great way to get good rotator cuff strength uh, in a nice dynamic position. This is the position I want you in, arm at 90 degrees rotating up to 90 degrees. Uh, when we're going backwards, this is doing the posterior cuff, so our external rotators. When we go up a little bit higher with the band and then come down forwards in front of our body, this is our internal rotators. Both are really important when maintaining good shoulder health and in rugby players, you're gonna be making lots of hits and just having that low load strength around the rotator cuff, I think is really important in overall shoulder health. Make sure you can maintain your arm in that 90 degree position. If your elbow is dropping down towards your side, you're engaging pecs and lats and you're unable to stabilize in that 90 degree position. If that is the case, go to a by the side shoulder rotation where we're pulling across the body for our internal rotators. So that's coming towards our belly button with the resistance. You should feel the resistance around the front delt slash pec region. Uh, this is the correct place to be feeling it. To work on the external rotators, we just change our position so that the band is coming across our body and we're pulling the band away from the midline, away from the belly button. This is gonna work the back of our shoulder, which is the posterior cuff or our external rotators. So just pick the one that feels most comfortable and then work towards that 90 degree position when able. A new addition that I've been adding for some shoulder health is this kettlebell press doesn't need to be too heavy. I've only got eight kilos here, doing five reps, two sets. It's a little bit harder to stabilize with the weight out in front. And I think it just provides that little bit of stability requirement, that little bit of strength requirement that some rugby players may not get when doing things like barbell bench press and other barbell movements dumbbells, kettlebells, it just makes the rotator cuff of the shoulder have to work really hard by itself, which I think in turn will be very important for rotator cuff health and stability of the shoulder. This will be good for people that have had previous shoulder dislocations or feel a bit loose around their shoulder. If you don't have access to a kettlebell or you don't have access to a band, these shoulder taps and in a second you'll see the shoulder tap and then a rotation is a great way to get the rotator cuff working a bit more dynamically. There is that stability requirement when you rotate up. Just do five reps on either side. You don't need any equipment to do this exercise. If you're unable to do it on your feet, just go onto your knees to do it or into a one knee on the ground position and then out to a full position. Make sure that you're rotating as far up to the top as possible. Once again, this is especially for people that have loose shoulders or have had perhaps like a dislocation in the past. My second optional exercise, if you don't have access to a kettlebell or the band, is to do I's, Y's and T's. This exercise targets the back half of the shoulder, so around that rear delt area. We start off with I's, which is right up in front, like the letter I. We then go to Y's, which is in that 45 degree position, and then T's, which is just right out to the side. It's the lowest version of the movement. Each round, you're going through the I's, Y's, and T's three times, which equals nine reps, making sure you're getting up as high as possible without your head coming off the bench. For someone that has a lot of shoulder health issues, this may be one that you want to include anyhow along with the first two. The single leg squat is my most recommended exercise in this entire prehab as it works the entire lower body. 
we're doing two sets of eight reps to a box height that we can control. So this means that our hips are staying in a flat position, so I'm not overbalancing, so my hips are neutral. My knee is coming down inside my big toe and my knees tracking over my toes. We're not trying to keep our knees behind our toes, guys. The exercise becomes more difficult the lower the box height, but we don't want it so low that you can't do the exercise correctly with good form. If you are a very tall lock, it's gonna be a very hard exercise, so don't feel embarrassed if you have to do a really high box height. Just get good at the exercise and work your way down. Use the plates to add extra height, and as you feel comfortable, take the plates away. This will reduce the height of the box and make the exercise harder. Work on being as perfect as possible for two sets of eight reps. This is really important because it helps to prevent injuries around the foot, knee, ankle, and hip and groin. It does a bit of everything. So. Stability around the body will help the ankle. It's definitely going to help with things like meniscus and ACL injuries, having that control of our knee, MCL injuries as well. And also having that control around our hip will help to reduce things like groin pain. If our knee is always coming inside our body, it's going to lead to things like groin pain. So the more control and strength we can have around our knees and our hips, the better guys. So make sure that you work hard on getting down to a low box height. The goal would be to get to about 90 degrees or lower if you can. We're not sitting on the box guys, just make sure you're coming down, tapping the box and coming back up. If you have to sit for one rep, that is okay, but the goal is to just tap the box and then come back up with really good form. So work on that one, guys. It's probably my favorite exercise in this list. Guys, for those of you that are really struggling with the single leg squat, start with the step down. This is an optional for the people that are really struggling to do a single leg squat. You may just need to do this for one or two weeks to get the technique down. Just have a little box or a couple of plates stacked on each other. Touch your heel to the floor. Make sure you're still working on keeping that hip, knee, and ankle control so the hip stays in line so it should be parallel with the ground. The knee shouldn't come, shouldn't come aggressively inside our big toe and our knee should travel over our toes to allow you to get to the ground. Control that motion and then progress yourself onto the single leg squats. Our next exercise is a double leg hip thruster. Set yourself up on the edge of a box. The edge of the box should be around about shoulder blade height. Find a, find a comfortable position. We're doing two sets of eight reps. We're squeezing our glutes at the top. Keep your chin tucked the entire time. The only thing that should be moving is your hips. You'll see I should keep my chin tucked and I'm squeezing at the top. The only thing moving here is really my hips, making sure that our lower back isn't arching at the top. We're just squeezing our glutes, getting no arch in our back. An optional here is that for people that find the double leg hip thrust too easy, a single leg is a lot harder. With the double leg, you can add up to about 20 kilos or so. Um, I don't have the bar with me there, so I opted just for a lighter dumbbell, uh, sorry, kettlebell, which was just allowing me to get some extra load through my hip. But certainly, this is gonna help warm the glutes up, warm the hammies up a little bit. Um, go for the double leg option to start off with, and when you feel more confident, go for the single leg option. This is gonna be really good for anyone that's had hip, knee, or ankle injuries in the past. My next hip orientated exercise that is a must inclusion is a star plank. It's a side plank, we're on our side, our bum is in so we're in a straight pencil line and our raising our top leg up and down. So this works both sides of our glutes, the underside and the top side. The underside is obviously keeping us off the floor and then the top side is what is raising our leg up. This is important to strengthen what we call the lateral sling or the side muscles of our body. So this is specifically our glute med or our small glute on the side. This is important guys because if you don't have strong lateral hips or lateral slings or the outside of your legs, if, if you wanna go with it that way, you're more likely to have things like groin pain and you're more likely to suffer things like an ACL injury, a knee injury, like an MCL injury. So having a strong lateral sling is very important, making sure that you can do eight really good reps and increasing this in workouts as well. Obviously this is just a prehab, so stick with the eight reps, but we wanna get good at this exercise. Now my optional extra for the hip is the Romanian deadlift. I may give this to someone that is having uh, issues around their hamstring or issues with their hip control. We wanna make sure that you keep your knee in a slightly bent position, your body stays fairly straight, and we're not moving through our back, but we're moving through our hips. 
The leg doesn't need to be bolt straight, we just need to make sure that we're hinging effectively around the hips. Now, if you're about to do a sprint session, I wouldn't do the RDLs because this is lengthening the hamstrings, which can increase your risk of a hamstring injury. But for players that suffer issues around the hip, so people with groin pain, people with hamstring issues, it is a nice exercise to add in on top in a prehab. So moving on from the hits, we're going to go to our calves. It's really important that we have good strength and the soleus press is a great way to get good strength in our calves. We're just doing low load though, so two sets of 12 reps at 20% body weight. I am just shy of 100 kilos, so I've got 20 to 25 kilos on there. I'm doing probably a little bit heavier than I should. We're just having a slightly reduced amount of load so we don't fatigue our muscles before you have a training session, but we want to improve the strength around our calves because that's going to help reduce the risk of ankle injuries and knee injuries and also just improve your capacity to exert yourself on the field and running and sprinting. So making sure the soleus press is a priority. A lot of the times um, people may not have access to a soleus press, in which case I would get them to do a standing calf raise. Often I prefer the soleus press, but if you have no other option, then go for the standing calf raise. Stand with your heel off the edge of a step or a stair so that you're just going up onto the balls of your feet or the pads of your feet. Coming down, dropping your heel down as far as possible, raising up as high as you can whilst keeping your foot straight. Don't let your foot roll to the side. Our goal is to get 12 reps. If you cannot achieve 12 reps, then it's really important that you work on this exercise. If you can get 12 reps quite easily, you can add a little bit of weight by holding onto a plate or a dumbbell. But once again, we're not trying to fatigue our calves out before exercise. Make sure that you do enough that you feel like you're working out a little bit, but not so much that you're gonna be fatiguing yourself. That'll take away from your running session or rugby session. Another option that I'll give to people that maybe suffer issues around their foot and ankle or their calves, they've had a history of calf tears, is doing some pogos. This is a light plyometric exercise. We try to keep our toes up as high as possible, landing on the front of our feet, and we rebound up with a little bit of knee bend. The idea here is that we get some shock or some plyometric load into the Achilles, into the calf. Two sets of eight reps is a nice way just to warm up the calves for more dynamic explosive movements. So this would be only added in for people that have suffered uh, lots of foot and ankle issues in the past. My final exercise that is a mandatory inclusion is the Y balance. This works on the entire lower body. So it works on ankle range motion, it works on knee control, and it works on hip control. We do the Y by reaching out in front and then reaching out behind and then reaching out behind but tucked in around the other leg. We want to reach out as far as we can whilst controlling the movement, making sure that we're controlled through our hips, controlled through our knees so our knee isn't coming inside our big toe and we're allowing our knees to come over our toes. Make sure that your heel doesn't come off the ground when doing this exercise. If it comes off a little bit, that's sort of okay, but really focus on keeping the heel flat. Some people prefer Further do this without shoes on. If this gets a bit too easy, you can then add an unstable object underneath your foot like a mat or something which has got a little bit of give to it to make it harder. Okay guys, so here is the full program written out. There is 10 exercises to do. It shouldn't take any longer than a minute and a half to two minutes to get through these exercises. It is designed to get through really quickly. I want you to be controlled, don't rush but no more than 10 exercises. I like to keep it to eight if I can. However, there are some optional extras that aren't in that list as well that some people may need because they've got more of a shoulder issue. They've got a previous history of an ankle issue. They've had an ACL injury in the past and you may want to take out some of the shoulder stuff because you've got fine shoulders and just keep one of the shoulder exercises in there instead of two and that way you can add an, an extra knee exercise in there if you've had that ACL injury. All prehab programs are built on a few principles. What is the sport requiring me to do? What's my previous injury history? And what's the current state of my body? So guys, that's my rugby prehab program. Please make sure that you check out some of my other videos on training in the gym. So that's like upper body, lower body, power sessions. I've got speed sessions. I've got some cardio sessions upcoming. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any more videos and content as they come out. I've also got a bunch of other socials. So if you want to join me on 
uh, Instagram or TikTok or what have you, we can do that as well. As always, guys, I really hope that you had a good time visiting my channel and I hope you learned something and I'll see you in another video. Goodbye for now.